In this video, let us find out how to locate and evaluate open educational resources effectively. Open educational resources. These are openly licensed educational materials like textbooks, interactive content, syllabi, and even full courses that are freely available online for anyone who wants to use them. You can start by learning a few tricks about searching for open educational content online. There are three steps you need to take when searching for OER in your subject area. Firstly, you need to identify keywords related to your subject. The second step is either search in a repository if you already know or search directly in a browser or in a search engine. And the third and final step is compile and evaluate the OER that you found. Okay, before we start searching using Google Chrome, let us first see these uh, OER repositories or libraries you call to search for a specific uh, keyword in your subject area. The list is provided uh, for you in the description. For example, here, we will see University of Minnesota's Open Textbook Library. Here you can browse by subject or simply you can search for a keyword. This is a really user-friendly OER repository where one can easily search uh, various uh, textbooks subject-wise. Or if you want to search for uh, uh, like uh, supplementary materials, you can search OER Commons. Here you can go here and then you can search for any syllabi or any assignment. You can give the keyword and you can select the subject, the level and all and then you can click on this search. Okay, now let us see how to search in Google Chrome. I am using a Chrome browser and a Google search engine. Okay, let us see that now. Here I am searching for molecular biology. If we search for uh, more than one word, that is a phrase, it's always good idea to keep that inside quotation, double quotation marks. For example, you observe the number of results we found here if we use these two words. Okay, so let me see this. Without quotations, what it does is uh, a search engine would independently search for websites that contains the words molecular and biology, but we want together. So, we will keep it inside these quotation marks and now observe the number that we found. It reduced, isn't it? Okay. Now, when we search for this, sometimes we may get immediately depending upon um, uh, like uh, the search patterns, immediately you might get some uh, open educational content or what you can do is here is a settings a gear icon. You click on that and go to advanced search. Or what you can do is you can simply type in google.com slash advanced search and type in the keyword or if you want exact word or a phrase you can type in. Come down and under usage rights scroll down and then you will find this. You can select the option. Let me select free to use or share. Then I will click on advanced search and here I found some material. It's always good practice. Once you see these results, it doesn't mean that every content is OER. We have to click on that link we found and then we have to search for that license it got. For example, let me search this first. Let me search this. This is a, a press book. Okay. And now let me scroll down and see what it says. Usually at the end of the page, they uh, say in each website, right? You all know now what are these symbols. This is a creative commons attribution required and non-commercial. So here they clearly stated creative commons attribution non-commercial international license. You can click on this link and you can read all the details of that particular license. Similarly, let us search for another phrase. Here I am searching for French as a second language and I used advanced search and I got some uh, details. Here it is uh, from Merlot 
I got one resource. Let me check what it is. Okay. The license clearly states CC BY. And these are the course resources. So we can click on this link again and then we can see. There is a tutorial also, Interactive Grammar Capsules for Intermediate. Similarly, when I searched for a French lesson, this time I changed my keywords and uh, I found some materials. When I searched for a uh, French lesson, I found this interesting book and this book is by uh, with a CC BY license. Okay, uh, University of Texas people developed this. So, chapter index and uh, the grammar, you can click on each and every chapter and then you can see these details. So, you can even download a PDF. If you are searching for an image in the browser, you can type in the phrase or the word and click on images and then under tools, you can select usage rights as creative commons license. So whenever you find these kind of material, if you want to use this, it's always good idea to click on that particular image and see the license details or directly you can search sites like uh, Pixabay where for example, if I want to use this image and then we have to read this license details. Most of the pictures in Pixabay are free for commercial use and no attribution is required, but still it's a good idea to attribute author and to give a source whenever we are using it in any e-learning materials. Similarly, in Flickr also when you search for an image, some license details will be written here. You click on this link and see those license details. If you are searching in uh, YouTube for a video, then whenever you search that you will find the small button for a search filters, you click on this filter and choose Creative Commons. And then when you find any details, you better click on that particular video or a resource that you find and go down and scroll down, click on the show more option and see whether they stated the license details clearly. Okay. Similarly, for videos, you can search in Vimeo also. In Vimeo also, you have these uh, filters options and in filters, you can find these licenses you can choose from. Similarly, you can search for interactive content in various uh, interactive content repositories like here it is a Libretex Studio. Also in eCampus Ontario, H5P Studio, you can find and search for relevant material. Okay, now you know how to search for OER, right? Either uh, in a browser or in a repository. Fine. Now, uh, let's see the third step that is compiling and evaluating OER found. You prepare a checklist. So you have to check for all this quality, appropriateness, clear license details and technical quality. What is a uh, quality you check for? Usually you have to see uh, the reputation of author or institution, whether the material is peer reviewed and uh, pedagogical methods are used. Uh, that's good in that material and it allows uh, whether it allows uh, for a customization or refinement. Sometimes we may not get exactly what we are looking for. So we have to check for that also and then whether the content is accurate or not, whether sources are identified and cited and whether it aligns with your learning outcome or a course objective, we have to check and also have to see uh, whether there is a possibility to enhance that particular materials or you, if you want to do some modifications, you have to see this license details also. Okay, once you find a good OER, you better check with the, some rubrics like OER evaluation tools already available. This is for example, one uh, rubric uh, in found in iRubric evaluating OER. You can always uh, modify and reuse it or you can create your own checklist. If you don't find exactly what you are looking for, it's always good idea to repurpose or remix or create with the open license and release it as OER.